anywhere around the world and use huge amount of energy to move it from A to B. For example, in Ireland, people eat their apples, and the apples come from New Zealand, which is nearly the whole way around the planet. Okay? There's massive amounts of energy used in moving that around when we can produce our own apples. Okay? So eating locally, eating the seasonal food, uh, cuts out the energy cost. The energy cost, with all the energy being burned, global warming, etc., etc. Okay. So, Cuba. Why do we talk about Cuba? In '89, after the German Wall came, the Berlin Wall came down, the Soviet bloc fell. Suddenly, Cuba had an energy crisis because of its political relationship with Russia. So suddenly, all the oil that it used to have was pulled out of the way, and it couldn't go around with its high centralized energy system in the old way. So they had to create a new way, which was in the cities, producing food everywhere are starving and dying. So now, even today, Havana is producing about 80% of its own vegetables uh, and fruits and vegetables, okay? If one city can do it, other cities can, can do it. They did it not by choice, but because it was a reality. But what the permaculture and the urbanists are talking about is that cities could become uh, more uh, energy, food production uh, independent, because if we get hit by an energy crisis, well then we can deal with it better. And that's one of the things that permaculture and transition are looking at, okay? So, so this idea of sepals is just answer continuous productive urban landscape. So the idea was, he, he was looking at the examples of Cuba and working with that, this is a guy, An Andre Vilhon, uh, in England, an architect, and he's looking at having a series of nodal points uh, and a route way to connect them, normally linear strips of food production. So he, his examples are in London. He developed that, that project a little bit later, and this is what he did in, in Middlesbrough. Beautiful project, Middlesbrough, North England. Okay? So this is what he did. This is a real project. Only in the space of one year, developing food production zones in parks, in schools, in hospitals, on windowsills, training systems to get people uh, knowledgeable how to make these things, etc., etc., connecting them up with special strategic routes. So this is what the map looked like. At the end of this process, this is about 2007, at the end of this, they had a huge collective feast of food in the art gallery, and about 6,000 people, I think, ate food together, okay? Just an example of what can be done, okay? It's a city. Um, they have a bicycle network, so that was the this big route here, which is in green going around here. It's a bikeway. But we proposed a second one and a smaller little one. So there was, it's like ripples. There was a series of routes to get around the city. And then, like almost like from the green heart, the Citadel Park down here, like routes spreading out from here. So basically, you can connect to one of these greenways, go along a lovely little way, and get into nature, and get deep into nature very easily. So. It, it's trying to offer ways to tell, pull away from the blocks that exist, okay? So that's just a little bit more exploration. Now, that's what the video was talking about. The, uh, the book I introduced about the, the ideas. So again, like I said earlier, at the end I just had to design a piece of architecture to get to college. That's what I did. But at the same time I used it to develop an urban project, an urban scheme for the, for the city, um, which was the base. It was a greenway and a food production zone, the seaport and the greenway, which I explained. Um, and, and to try to turn it into reality, we set up real-world events to try to make those things happen, okay? So this is very quickly taking you through the, the ideas. The name of the project was Catalyst at Botanic Spine. So this is the symbol of it. Basically, it's the River Liffey, and you have an orbital loop, 18-kilometer cycling route around the city, which is also a zone that produces food. And I focused here, the catalyst. The catalyst being that thing that brings change. Avanza. Uh, okay. Oh. okay, so uh, again, from 2005, okay? So, going through very quickly, uh, just a few maps that's there. This one here. Okay, so this, this, this image here brings a bit closer, just showing you uh, kind of the true map of the city, okay? So you can see it there. So basically, what we have was the River Liffey, uh, from where the city of Dublin developed. There's the sea over there. The two canals, the big park. This bit here is very interesting because this was an old train line. 
This bit is actually a tunnel which goes underneath the park. Most Dublin people don't even know about this, okay? So part of the exploration was very interesting to see an unused train line still with the tracks and trying to use that, okay? So that was that connection there. Um, and then you can see the, the little roads that it crosses, okay? So I'm going to focus on this area around here, okay? The spine, like the human spine, being the system that all the bits and pieces move through and trying to almost like like biomimicry, trying to mimic the system of a spine and, and, a, and a human system with all its complexity and interesting things. Uh, and to bring that like, to a botanic world, uh, an urban system, dealing with different sorts of systems. So this, that's part of what I was kind of looking at there, okay? Uh, so we set up a, a thing here, uh, an eco-city group. Uh, then, yeah, just looking at different ideas, the public transport of the city, uh, connections, uh, communities of the city. Uh, this is the analysis of looking at that stairs, that, 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 that kind of unused train line, that's that image over there, okay? Um, then here looking at, looking at a possible zone, uh, an analysis of this kind of zone, what could be happening, etc., etc. okay? Then looking at, this is the area of Sheriff Street, uh, I don't have time to get into really the complexity of this, but it was where the old established community did exist, a very marginalized community, um, not a favela, but similar sort of things going on. Problems, tough times, <coughs> lack of resources, uh, lack of connection with the state, etc., etc., okay? Uh, then looking at parks from around the world. This is a very interesting example here. This is the Mile End Park in, in England, very, very in London. 